As Marc Chagall once said, great art picks up where nature ends. And for nearly the past five decades, Huntington Beach has embraced and prioritized the development of an artistic culture that complements our city's abundant natural beauty. It is something a part of our residents' lives, and it's something we encourage in new developments. Visitors flock here every year to see the wildlife of the wetlands or hang out on our miles of picturesque coastline. Our natural resources are known worldwide. However, many don't know as much about Huntington Beach's wonderful works of public art. Hi, I'm Lynn Semetta, and I'm excited to introduce you to some of Huntington Beach's best art installations and the fascinating stories that go behind them. Since I took an art history course in college, this has become a real passion for me. Outside of my duties on the city council, I've long taken to painting and expressing myself artistically. I've entered pieces in local contests, held my own first art show here, and have sat on the boards for Huntington Beach Art League and Watercolor West. From pieces that began in controversy to reclaimed pieces that have found a second life, Huntington Beach's public art has become a wonderful and instrumental part of our surf city culture. Welcome to Terra Mare, the public artwork at the Beach Boulevard Medical Pavilion. The Beach Boulevard Medical Pavilion put such thought into this project. After reviewing nearly 20 sculptors' work in a wide range of media, we selected Laddie John Dill. Born in Long Beach and raised in Malibu, living in Venice since the late 60s, with a career spanning over 50 years, he is by far one of the most prolific and dedicated artists of this century. After careful consideration of all of the parameters surrounding the project, we were enthusiastic and confident that Laddie's work, site-specific sculpture, would benefit this project and the city of Huntington Beach. As early as the mid-70s, Laddie began working on experimentation utilizing natural earth materials in combination with glass. The main premise of the work was that of landscape. The surface of the work employed the use of tempered glass and ground minerals and oxides indigenous to surrounding landscape. Examples of those materials include blue cobalt oxide, red iron oxide, quartzite, volcanic ash, and basalt. Since they do not deteriorate or fade in sunlight, and any glass that covers portions is tempered and treated for ultraviolet protection, the sculpture will exist outside with minimal maintenance. Laddie is grateful for the opportunity to work on this project in Huntington Beach, since some of his fondest memories include road trips from Malibu to Surf HB in the 60s and 70s, when surfing was far less commonplace than it is today. He first began surfing in 57 and was a founding member of the Malibu Surfing Association. While he's been told that surfing has frequently been the topic of other public art projects in Huntington Beach, his reason for integrating it into this work is personal and communal. The ocean and surfing are direct conduits for his inspiration, stress relief, and healing, and it fortifies his deepest spiritual connection with nature. His concept for Terra Mare is his elevated sculptural expression of surfing. Since combining minerals and oxides with cement and glass built onto actual surfboards is unique to his entire body of work. In addition for this work, he deepened his connection and expression of physical place by incorporating the same types of indigenous geological materials found in Huntington Beach and the Bosa Chica wetlands. This sculpture for the Beach Boulevard Medical Pavilion is a continued exploration into something he has always wanted to reveal in his work. How as the land meets the sea, we humans attempt to tame the untainable.
Hi, I'm Susan Narduli from Narduli Studio in Los Angeles, and I'm the artist for the digital wall at the Paseo Hotel. I've been, I've been doing this kind of work for over 20 years. I'm also an architect, so working with my art in an architectural medium is, you know, it's, it's like the perfect marriage of art and architecture. So a project like this was a really amazing opportunity. To do. This is a 50 foot tall media wall and it was an amazing opportunity to work at such an architectural scale. I received a call from um, a public art manager, uh, Beatrix Barker, who I've known for many years. And she said there's a potential public art commission at the Paseo Hotel and she wanted to show my work um, for this. And I put together a portfolio. We've done a lot of digital work and uh, we were lucky enough to be selected. And then we worked very closely with the team, the developer from Pasea and with the city to come up with a piece that was representative of the city of Huntington Beach and the spirit of Pasea. When you have a public art commission, it's a very open process. So it gives the city the opportunity to think about how they might want to represent their vision for the city. And of course the client, Pasea, they, they wanted the piece to represent their concept of Pasea. Pasea is like a slow stroll. It's a, um, they wanted something that was somewhat meditative, that really responded to the feeling of Huntington Beach, a beach community that uh, is just so, um, it's just imbued with this uh, the sense of light and, and, and the pace of the, the ocean moving in and out. And it did evolve slowly. We spent about, I would say, a good 10 months documenting the city. And, and through that process, we got a sense of the piece. We understood the community, we understood the city, the geography. I mean, this is the piece that looks right over the Pacific Ocean. I mean, that really is the inspiration for it. And yet we wanted to bring the sense of community into it as well. So um, I suppose it was after we started to build this archive of content that we started to know what we wanted to do because the piece is, is it's not just video footage that we shot. It's the majority of the piece is generative animations. And these generative animations are digitally driven. So this piece is always changing. It's connecting with the temperature of the ocean, the tides of the ocean, the, um, the wind from, you know, that's coming off the ocean. And all of that actually changes these animations over time. So we came here to understand the community in the city and the piece came out of that. Hi, I'm Michael Davis. I'm the artist that has done the artwork here for the Luce Project. There's a series of installations, and they're all entitled Elements. Each one has its own name, and there's four individual pieces here at this site. Two different fountains and 
several different sculptures and installations. The uh, project came together through an arts consultant by the name of Leslie Elwood. And Leslie and I have worked together many, many times on projects in the past. And it was a competition with a number of artists that made presentations to the developer. And I was fortunate enough to uh, be awarded the commission. The pieces that I made are um, the, the tower that you see behind here, which is called uh, Rain Double Fall. Uh, there's an adjacent fountain that is called Replenish and Restore. And then there's a series of light boxes which are a part of that particular project. And then there's an adjacent plaza where there's um, a series of sculptures and another fountain installation. So I guess it would be probably around four pieces, four to five pieces that, that I, were, I was responsible for. And I also was able to work with the landscape architect to co-design part of the plaza so that the pieces fit into the nature of what both of us wanted to accomplish here at the site. I've done many, many pieces, uh, site-specific installations and public art installations that I think people trust what I, what I come up with. And I had uh, as much freedom as I wanted to either, <laughs> either do well or, or not. So it was, it was a fun project to work on. And also uh, discovering things about the site, which was very important to me. Uh, I started actually doing designs because I had to make a presentation of models and maquettes and so forth to sell the idea. And I started with kind of relating what I saw in the architecture, sort of a postmodern structure to it, maybe sort of a Zen aesthetic, more of a identifying with this, with, with modern art at that particular period, the postmodern period. Unbeknownst to me, by doing a uh, search on Google, and you can go back in time with Google, I found out that this was a site of Wintersburg, which is a Japanese community back in the turn of the century, right up until about 1941. And the major, one of the major players was, was the Fruta fa family, who had a farm, who at first off raised koi, and then second, as they came back after internment in 1945, they started doing li lilies. So it was this combination that I discovered that I'd already worked on that related to uh, this f family and the history of site. So I love the, the way replenish and uh, restore the, the fountain that has a negative fountain, which actually goes back into the ground, replenishing the aquafilter, which is actually one of the things that the city of Huntington Beach does. So that was referencing that. I wanted to use uh, a, onyx and I wanted it to be backlit so it would bring color and light into the project and also talk about the natural elements which is what all these pieces are about. Um, I really had a great time working with Judson Glass on the piece that you, you might see here in this video which is a glass box with these glass beautiful glass lily pads that have been slumped onto sheets of plate glass and one of the things I wanted to include in that were uh, images of the lily pond and how that reflected um, the light off of it and also at night the, the light that would come through it uh, through illumination. This particular public art project had great sight lines and that was part, part of the uh, reason why these pieces were chosen to fit at this site and make relationships to the other pieces within the site. So there are installation uh, granite sections within the paving design that carry you through the entire artwork. So if, if you're keen enough and you, and you look down, you can see pieces of granite that lead you to one piece and then pieces of stone that lead you to the other pieces on the side.
is Martin Webb and my piece of art is called From the Earth and it's an installation in the outdoor garden of the Huntington Beach Senior Center. It's made up of 16 columns and the columns are all clad with handmade ceramic tile and the tallest ones are about the height of a person, about six feet tall and then they gradually get smaller so some are very small, um, low level, almost like little houses or little kind of uh, stumpy kind of pedestals sticking out of the ground. As an artist, um, I think I started at a young age. I've always made art. I was always that kid who was drawing lots of things and uh, I eventually went to college, studied painting and illustration and then I had a career as an art teacher. I came to California about 20 years ago and I was initially working as a commercial designer and making a lot of art as well and gradually the exhibiting of art and making of commissioned pieces like this has become my full-time occupation. When I first applied and was selected as the artist for this project the senior center was just a set of architects plans. The construction hadn't started. Uh, we decided it was best for me to wait until the construction was fairly complete so that I could get a better idea of the space and how uh, the different areas were going to relate to the surroundings and design the artwork accordingly. So it was about a two year process from actually applying for the project to actually installing the artwork that you see now. I work in a lot of different materials and I try and match the materials to the site. Um, and the site of the exterior garden with the Huntington Beach climate made particular demands on the materials and I thought that ceramics would be a good way to go, something that's very durable, withstands the elements, but also lets me work as a painter um, uh, in transferring images to it. Uh, now, I'm not a ceramics person at all, so um, I worked on this with a fabricator called Michael Kirkman in Berkeley, and uh, he handmade all the tile to my dimensions, and uh, between us we worked on glaze colors and then I applied the glaze to the tile. So there are 16 columns and it works out at about 1500 tile, something like that, and each tile is unique and hand painted. When I first visited the site the thing that struck me most was the setting with the park and particularly the nature trail being so adjacent to the senior center and I knew I wanted to make a connection between the senior center and that natural world and make that connection through the art and uh, I was standing taking photographs in what is now the garden area and just next to me was a was a low bush about two feet high and out of the blue a big jackrabbit just shot out of this bush and ran across the lawn and into the park and I just thought that's it that's my theme that's my motif for this project because um, jackrabbits they're they're very energetic they're very playful they're very peaceful animals I thought those were all great qualities to bring to the garden now the seniors who use the center and use the garden are often there many times. One of the things I thought about was that I wanted them to, I wanted the artwork to reveal itself slowly over time. Uh, the nice thing about the columns is that you can wander around them and amongst them and you'll keep getting different viewpoints and you'll keep noticing new things about them each time. So uh, that's another way that I'm hoping that this contributes to the uh, environment of the CD and Center Garden.
I'm uh, Mark Zambrano, and I'm a resident of Huntington Beach. And I wrote a book on the surfing in Huntington Beach called Surfing in Huntington Beach that uh, covers the history of surfing from its beginnings to current day in the city. So this sculpture has a pretty long history, a uh, pretty interesting history as far as sculptures go in the town. It was uh, originally commissioned in the early 70s for the new Civic Center. So in the 70s, the town was undergoing a major development. They wanted to instill it with public art. And one of the first ones commissioned was this statue. Um, they were putting in a new Civic Center that's currently on Main Street. And they wanted at the centerpiece in the courtyard a statue right by its reflecting pool. And so they came up with some ideas and they were familiar with the artist. His name is Edmund Schumpert and he had done some other work for the city. He had previously done a sculpted bust of Duke Hanamoku, who is one of the most legendary servers of all time. And that was a bronze bust that used to be at the pier and now it's inside the Huntington Beach Surf Museum. So they were familiar with his work. They knew he did things in surfing. Surfing was becoming more and more popular in town. So they commissioned the artist and he sculpted it in Italy. It was sculpt he uh, sculpted out clay and then cast it in bronze in Italy and then brought it over here and then unveiled it. And when he did, it was much to the surprise of town officials. Uh, they were, to say the least, taken aback by the brazen nakedness of the statue. Uh, they did not expect it, which is ironic because the trophy that he had sculpted was naked. Uh, they should, probably should have seen it coming, but they didn't. So. They didn't know what to do with it. They thought, uh, the initial thought was that it was a little too uh, extreme for children and anybody that might be going to the new Civic Center. Uh, so as a result, they tried to figure out what to do with it. And at that time in the early 70s, it's nothing like it is today. People somewhat affectionately and maybe not affectionately used to call it surf ghetto. And so in a way it was kind of pushed aside or maybe sent to the beach with other beach bums and ruffians that were hanging and loitering around the beach, um, kind of away from the, the eyes of town officials and anyone that might be hanging out in the middle of town. So it was decided that they would put it here, where it stands today, right on the PCH. And uh, whether that was a better decision or not, I don't know. Right now it's safe from the eyes of the Civic Center, but anyone that goes by it on the PCH is getting mooned. And there's a lot more people that go by here on a daily basis that then ever go into the, ever go into the Civic Center. So to say the least, uh, it is what it is, but here it is today. Hi there, my name is Rebecca Bassford and I'm with JBA Art Group. I'm the Director of Business Development and Creative Services and I'm thrilled to be talking to you about our mosaic that we did for the Pisea. JBA Art Consulting Firm started 50 years ago as an art consultancy. Uh, our founder, Janet Van Arsdale, traveled the world and took over 
a half a million images in her with her wide format camera circling the globe. We started working with hotels as an art consultant, sharing those photographs. And over time, over the last 20 years, we determined based on feedback from our hotel partners that we worked with, uh, that they wanted a little more. They wanted to be able to take that imagery and incorporate it into the surroundings and artify it. And our artists incorporate, whether it's the photography we've taken or um, our photography from the surrounding area and embellish the images with their graphic artist ability, hand painting or fabricate dimensional products. We were uh, thrilled because R.D. Olson has been a client for many years and we've worked on many projects with them as the developer. And on this particular project, they worked with an art consultant and they told the art consultant to meet, reach out to us because we are the designers, the artists, and the fabricators. So they reached out to us uh, and that's how the process began. It was a pretty arduous process as public art is and we did have the opportunity to go in front of city council and that was part of the vote because the, the whole imagery for the city is very important that it was a cohesive look. So fortunately, they liked our designs and our concepts. So what we did is we had our art director, Sarah Soto, come down to the property, get a feel for what the vibe was of the property and what the space was like. And then she sat at the beach and took hundreds and hundreds of photographs of the waves at every crest and every time of day and every lighting just to see the perfect color and the perfect shape of the wave so we could present those in all the maquettes as we started with that process. It is 258 different shades, which you wouldn't know in looking at it, and there's over 200,000 tiles. It took 30 days to actually install the piece, but that does not include all the edits that we did back and forth. We went back and forth and back and forth. I think there were eight edits on this and making sure that each image was applied appropriate. So you look at that and you think it's a printed overall image, but it's not. The mosaic is uh, created by individual pieces of color, all representing the wave that was selected and going through the process to pick the right wave was all part of the details to make it perfect. What makes me the most excited about Huntington Beach's public art collection is that it is still growing. In fact, our next installation will find its home right here behind me near the Central Library. From the Naked Surfer to City Hall and everywhere in between, from Bolsa Chica to the beach, Huntington Beach will always be a place where both artistic and natural beauty are admired. We're blessed to have an abundance of both. On behalf of our City Council and our wonderful artists, thank you for taking some time to see a different side of Surf City. We hope to see you down here soon.